Hello everyone, my name is Zhang Yujun. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do the program statement and research methodology for certain research. And meanwhile, I'm going to use my own final year project assessing the public knowledge and the readiness to comply with the wild animal conservation law in Wuhan as an example to help me explain the concept. So let's get started. For close coherence with the title, Assessing Public Knowledge and Readiness to Comply with the Wild Animal Conservation Law in Wuhan, People's Republic of China, the programs should put an emphasis on the law and readiness towards it. So the core problem to be investigated by the proposed study is the public readiness for the latest registration of wildlife protection law WPL in China. So the public readiness affects the future compliance and effectiveness of the WPL deeply. Then, as a basis for this study, the researcher separated the problem into three sub-problems. The first, basic knowledge about the law related to field serves as the backbone of public readiness to comply and to accept the WPL, but on balance in personal so social economic background affects the level of knowledge to the, to the law. The second, another component of readiness, willingness to accept and comply with the law, is influenced by the extent to which the latest law is going to disturb citizens' day-to-day -day life. The last, though the readiness of public for the law varies, on the individual person basis. It's worth of finding the most reasons stated by all person among a variety of different responses. The objectives in this study can be divided into three different parts. Firstly, to examine the public knowledge about the relevant provisions to wildlife treat and eating in the latest WPO. Next, to assess the main reasons stated by the citizens as to why they cannot comply with the latest provisions proposed in the coming revised WPL. The last, to analyze the public readiness to comply with the latest provisions proposed in the coming revised WPL. Followed by the objectives, it is necessary to continue with the research questions, including what the citizens' levels of knowledge are, what the main reasons given by citizens are, and how likely the citizens are to comply with the law, respectively. Thus, different data analysis scale will be applied for the data depending on the data skills. You want to know more about it? Just come and follow me. You may take into account the Prisma systematic literature review when you are doing your own literature review. Firstly, you can search the data from either the other sources or the database searching. And then add the records together after the duplicates removed. Right now, we are able to screen the title and abstract of such a journal. Followed by that, we need to find the articles with the full text assessed for eligibility. And then we may find the useful news or reports, and let's just add it into our literature review. Finally, don't forget to pick up some studies for our quantitative synthesis. Here is an example for the meta analysis. Three different studies examine the three different respondents. We need to summarize the findings and to identify the gaps filled by these studies. Like all significant instruments, utilization of questionnaire involves validation. In quantitative validation, primarily, we need to establish the face validity, such as the dual language check and advice from the legal practitioners undertaken by this study. 
In total, two visitors checked the English edition and three checked the Chinese edition, as it will be mainly distributed in mainland China. Last but not least, to examine the questionnaire, we can run a trial to check the validity of questionnaire by calling friends or acquaintances for a pre-practice session. For example, in the validation of this instrument, the first validator deleted WPL words in the question three section B and deleted the question two in section C out of concern with the latest revision of WPL completely for the internal consistency. The second validator likewise also deleted the question two in section C and deleted the question eight in section C. I think the latest one will be quite effective in protecting wildlife. The third validator gave the advice on the word using in Chinese in section B and C. Additionally, the validator fourth and fifth validator gave the advice on improving the quality of questionnaire. In reliability part. This study used the responses from pilot study. In total, 75 respondents to conduct internal consistency. Cronbach's alpha test is used to examine the reliability. Result shows that the internal consistency of questions bounded to the one factor only by alpha 0.709 for liquid scale question, indicating the acceptable. Quality. Lastly, to revise the questionnaire from the first step onward until the enough reliability and validity are attained. Continuing with sampling procedures, we initially confirm with the sample size by referring to Christian Morgan formula. Getting the sample of 385 in light of 11 million population in Wuhan. Many scholars have proved the reliability of conducting questionnaire survey in social media. Data show that WeChat has a powerful friends network. 57.3 percent of customers made new friends via WeChat, and WeChat has become the largest social media platform in RPC with possession of over 1.1 billion users. Therefore, thanks to the widespread use of WeChat from which the respondents can be drawn, at the last, voluntary response sampling is applicable for assessing public readiness in society through WeChat platform. Coming to data analysis section, inferential statistics is used to simulate the population. The first step is about the normality test. Shapiro-Wilk and Komarov-Simov are two most conventional approaches, and the latter is always preferred when the sample size is more than 1,000. If the result of test shows the significance is less than 0.05, the non-parametric test should be used. And conversely, if the significance is more than 0.05, the parametric test should come into effect. Such as the Pearson's R test, incorporation test, and both of student T test and ANOVA test in comparison test. But what is important is that the value of screwness and cortices play the vital role when deciding the normality of data. If the division of both two values is falling within the range from minus 1.96 to 1.96. The parametric test is more appro appropriate to use. Back to this study, the non-parametric tests are used to infer the population, consisting the Mann-Whitney U test equivalent to student T test and the Kraskow-Wills H test, the alternative of ANOVA test. Let's take an overview to the demographic data. In total, 
410 respondents was obtained from online questionnaire. Firstly, in age categories, adolescence accounts for the largest share by 78%, while the senior citizens only make up the 0.5%. Then, for the annual income, more than 40% of respondents receive no salary yet, which implies either the student's identity or unemployment. Annual income below 70,000 yuan contributes to another 32% share, and the one above 300,000 yuan only makes another 0.7%. In education background, more than half of respondents possess bachelor's degree and college degree, which is slightly lower than the bachelor's degree, accounts for a quarter of the share. Then, continuing the demographic data, about 59.3 of respondents is male, whereas the rest is female. In mainland China, Hukou is an official document issued by the Chinese government certifying that the holder is a legal resident of a particular area. Given the information, more than half of respondents is living in urban area, while the other is living in non-urban area. Few of respondents come from overseas. As to employment, more than half of respondents are students in campus, which is corresponding to the non-income group in previous slide. State-owned factor has the lowest percentage by only 7.3%. Now, it's time to summarize the inferential statistics result. In Objective 1, to examine the public knowledge about the relevant provisions to wildlife trade and eating of the WPL, results show that significance exists in all comparisons except for the one of agenda and knowledge. In Objective 3, to analyze the public readiness to comply with the latest provisions proposed in the coming revised WPL, results show that Significance exists only in the two comparisons. One is between the question of whether you have heard the law and readiness, and the other is between the age groups and readiness. Objective 2, to assess the reasons stated by citizens as to why they cannot comply with the latest provisions proposed in the latest WPL, only involves the qualitative data analysis. Thus, we do not discuss it in this section. Followed by the quantitative data analysis, qualitative part is decoded based on the literature, qualitative data, and introduction to decoding and analysis. Hence, the main ideas can be divided into two categories. The first. I think the proposed WPL is difficult to enforce. The respondents give the reasons focusing on enforcement, awareness, demand, and society aspects. On the other hand, another contradictory statement given by a smaller proportion states that the proposed WPL is easy to enforce because of the tough lesson from the pandemic and believe in society like the government will enforce the law completely and the citizens will comply with the law closely. So, make a conclusion here. Firstly, the results of this study suggest that both knowledge level and readiness among society towards the new law are in medium level, which gives the government a promising signal on the projected enforcement. But there are still a lot of place for the governments to improve the visibility of the law and the confidence of citizens to the China's legal system. Secondly, for the reasons people who think the future enforcement is difficult give reasons involving enforcement systems 
awareness, demand, and society aspects. While those who think the enforcement is not difficult give reasons, including tough lessons from pandemic and belief in governments. So, for recommendations part, the regular promotion of knowledge of wildlife and relevant law should be conducted periodically in university campus due to the unexpected low level of knowledge about the WPL. Then, invention of environmental education or awareness program, the definition of the WPO and the ecological value of wildlife can be underlining part throughout the program. There are several references I used for this video composition and also my own study. Hopefully, you can also get the useful information from this reference. This is the end of this video. I'm gonna thanks for your watching and I hope you've learned a lot about the methodology part of scientific research and also the knowledge about the statistics. I'm gonna give the special acknowledgement to my supervisor, Dr. Amihan Shari. Thanks for your help.